Good morning everybody. Today we're going to be changing out the pressure washer. It's just the, uh, the three-legged mount. They're pretty much standard on all, uh, but we're going to change out this pressure washer pump uh, for the original that came on this steel RB200. It's a uh, 2.3 gallon per minute and it's rated at uh, I believe 2500 PSI. Let me look. There's a data plate back here. It is 2.3 gallons a minute and 2,500 PSI, I see it. So, um, now this pump is model number RMW 2.2G24. I don't know what all that means. The one that's on here is the same RMW 2.2G24. That one is 2.6, this one's 2.4. So 2.2, maybe that's gallons per minute. I don't know, 2,400, 2,600 is the PSI. Maybe that's what that means, I guess. I don't know. Um, you know, they're pretty cheap. I feel that. See what I mean? They're pretty cheap, man. It's like popcorn metal, <laughs> whatever they call it. Just crap cast. Um, so you got where the shaft, it's called a vertical shaft because your shaft is going vertical. Whereas my pressure washer, the pump is to the side and it's this way. It's a horizontally horizontal shaft pump. This one's a vertical shaft pump. Uh, so if you have like something like this, like the Troy built or, or um, you know, one of the ones you buy at the box stores and it's kind of like this and the pump is on the bottom. If you're starting to do a search for uh, parts or something like that, vertical shaft is what you're looking for not uh, horizontal so that should help you out right there uh, it's got three mounts right here he bought this for I think it was hundred and forty bucks plus tax uh, but it was local if you buy it online you're gonna spend probably ninety to a hundred bucks uh, plus shipping so whatever is probably close enough and it was convenient for him to buy it right away uh, they had it in stock at Savannah cleaning supply on Dean Forest um, so Came with a brand new um, cipher, siphon port hose. And so a few things about this. This is your pressure line right here. So he's gonna screw his pressure line here. And then this is his garden hose right here. Okay, so this is your fresh water supply right here. Um, if you look right here, this is your unloader valve. And so what happens with that, and I'll, I'll just give it to you in a nutshell. I can't get too technical because I've never taken one fully apart. Uh, but the fresh water is going to come in here and when you squeeze the trigger the pressure comes out and there's all types of valving and stuff in here and check valves and stuff that that gets pressure built by the shaft spinning from the engine so as the fresh water comes in from your spigot or your water source whatever it goes in to your pump it comes back down all this stuff here okay and this this unloader valve is closed so it's, it's closed, there's a ball valve right here that's closed, and so that means the pressure can only go one way and that's out your wand, right? And you got the trigger, so it's flowing. Now, if you, when you let off, that puts back pressure here, and when that back pressure comes in here, the little check valve will open and it allows the fresh water to go into the pump, and then the pump will circulate the fresh water back into here, and then it's circulating. If it wasn't doing that, if you didn't have this check valve working properly, if this check valve, and you'll know because when you're pressure washing, as soon as you squeeze the trigger, the pressure washer changes its pitch. You hear a change in RPM and a change in pitch. And then you squeeze and it's like, and it's working. And when you let off, if it doesn't go back to a higher RPM, then what's happening is your check valve is stuck. And, and if your check valve is stuck, and it's not you know going through and water's not flowing then the water that's in the pump in all your check valves and everything is going to start to foam up it's going to start to boil in there and foam up and your pump's going to cavitate and burn up really fast so if your check valve's not working right if you can't build pressure if you squeeze the trigger and it won't build pressure your check valve is probably not working right you can replace these check valves fairly cheap um, and they're not hard to do um, so if you're not building pressure, ch check the check valve. If you're building pressure and when you let off, you're not really hearing a change of pitch or, or something like that's not right, then what's happening is your check valve's not allowing the water to go through. You're going to burn your pump up real fast. So like sometimes when I'll be talking to you guys and my pressure washer's running in the background, people are like, oh, you're going to burn up your, your pressure washer. No, I got a check valve also. 
an unloader valve, I should call it. And the unloader valve is going to allow the water to flow back in and circulate through your pump. Now these smaller pumps here also have like a little weep hole here. I haven't exactly figured out how it works, but I know when I had my Troy built many years ago, if you're off your trigger for an extended period of time, it's almost like heat or something builds up and this, this will start weeping water out. Um, and it'll be a pretty good flow and it'll actually put a little hole in the ground because this is mounted like this underneath. And so this is only about seven, six, seven inches off the ground. So when you're off the trigger for an extended period of time um, and the pump is running, this starts to pee water pretty hard down. All right, so it must have something to do with pressure building up and all that, I'm not exactly sure. I know my, my bigger boy pressure washer doesn't have this set up. I only see these on like your cheaper units. So this, this has something to do with pressure building up. Um, this is your downstream chemical injector. This is your siphon port. So if you needed to change it, you can change it here. All right, if you notice, this siphon port is well after the pump. Here's your pump. This is well after your pump. So when the chemical gets in, it goes right out your hose. So when you read things that say, um, don't use, uh, don't use bleach in your pump and stuff like that, bleach will cause damage. Look at where this is. If this is after your unloader valve and after your, you know, uh, guts of the unit, let's just say all your plumbing that you can see, if this is after that, there's nothing that's going to happen to your pump. Okay, some places are going to put warnings just to cover their butt. If this is here, like I sometimes see this here. Sometimes uh, I think Karcher has their siphon right here by their fresh water line. And then when it goes in, it goes through all this. You can't put bleach in that. That bleach is going to destroy the insides of the pump. It's going to corrode it really, really fast. So watch for that, okay? If it says don't use bleach, then don't use bleach. But look, if your downstream chemical injector is well after the pump, which this one clearly is, I don't care what the instructions say or what the warnings say, I'll run bleach through this, no problem. It's well after the pump. Now, when you get a brand new pump, you got this right here. There should be 90 weight oil already in it. So it's a good idea to just take your wrench, crack this open, and with it level, look to see if you got oil at the threads in here. You should. If you don't, put 90 weight oil in it, all right? If you do, seal it up. They told the guy when he bought it and brought it to me, yeah, they looked in it, they, they said it's already serviced, you don't have to do nothing, just bolt it on. I said, okay, no problem. I took my wrench, I opened this up, and I put 90 weight in it anyways, because it wasn't to the threads. I want it to the threads. Um, not down here, I wanted it to the threads. So. I uh, added some 90 weight motor oil, that's that gear oil, that's a really thick stuff. Uh, added a little bit, put, it, uh, put the nut back on and tightened it down. So that's it, that's, that's what we're going to be doing right now, it's just going to swap this out. Um, I gave you the part number already, RMW 2.2 G24, and it says use SAE 90 right here. Made in People's Republic of China, PRC. Beautiful. Probably got the Corona now. Outstanding. What we're going to do here is just stand this up. And you will see that there's three bolts underneath here. One, two, three. And that's the three bolts on the leg here. One, two, three. So we're just going to crack those three bolts. It's 14 millimeter. Uh, the problem is these bolts hold the engine on. So when you take this off, you need to be very, very careful that engine's gonna wanna fall. So it's a good idea to prop something up behind it. Um, figure out a way to keep your engine from falling off the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and just crack all the bolts right now and then we'll worry about that in a second. When you take off this pump, you need to pay very close attention to what comes off. You're gonna have a keyway right here that's gonna hold, that, that mates this to the shaft, and I'll show you that. You're also looking to make sure that there's no spacers or something that you need to be concerned with 
when you take this off. So we're gonna take most of this off right now and then we'll get to the last one. Okay, no spacers, and here's the keyway, and the keyway fits in the groove here. And here of the shaft. Now, my little makeshift holdy thingy didn't work out too well, but that's okay. There's the motor. It's not like it's really heavy. At this point, it's a good idea to take a rag with a little solvent, a little cleaner, maybe some mineral spirits or something, a little gasoline on a rag, and just clean off any yuck that might be on this shaft here and also inside here. Just make sure it's all nice and clean. Too easy. So here's that keyway, right? Very important, don't lose it. There were no spacers on the pump, so that's, that's too easy. Here is the pump. So it's not a bad idea, if you can, turn the pump. I can move this pump with my thumb, like that, and try. Line this up. Not really. I can't do it this way. Reaching underneath. Trying to line the keyway up. started then I'll stand the machine back up. Alright I got it on but it was a real pain in the butt to do it. Especially trying to do it on camera. So now we just have to line the holes up, line the bolts back up and stuff. Get everything started again. One, two, and a third one. I would say you don't want to really tighten anything down until you have everything started. And then you want to tighten everything down evenly so you don't crack the ears of the pump, one of the three ears. So once you get them all started, then slowly bring them tight. Yeah, that's not even tight yet. I'm just making sure it's all lining up right.
Okay. In case you're wondering what happened with his pump, it cracked. He was getting ready to use it and it cracked uh, somewhere around here actually. I think right here. Yeah. I don't know if he did something, but it's cracked right here. And so water is just pissing everywhere. Couldn't do anything about it really. And now he could buy just this bottom, but I can only imagine what that would cost and the problems that it could be putting that back together. Um, my suggestion is, was to go get himself a nice used commercial grade pressure washer um, or just get a pump for a hundred bucks or so and make some money with this while you continue because he's had this now for two or three years um, just make some more money with this but from now on use all the money you make from this from pressure washing because he's the guy with the stand on mower um, that I did the stander work on changed the belt out on the X mark he's got a very very big lawn service and then he does pressure washing as well so I said, take all your money from pressure washing and put it into a nice unit um, going forward. Don't, don't use your pressure washer money towards your, your lawn service income. So, but yeah, that's it. Uh, done deal. And his operates the same way. Your unloader valve right here, it's all the same. And then you got your little weep hole here. So fresh water in, pressure out. Downstream is after the pump and all the assembly. So. There you go, but yeah, his problem was cracked housing. Kind of weird, but yep, show sure enough. Okay, anyways, maybe you learned something today. Maybe not. I'll see you guys on the next one.